welcome back to Data Leaps. In today's video, we're going through a demo for visualizing streaming data or real-time data using Databricks and Power BI together. First pattern that we're going to walk through, we are using Delta Life Table as well as Power BI Direct Query with Auto Page Refresh. Without further ado, let's go over to my laptop. First, we have is a pass for some dimension tables. And we also have a streaming folder that has all the streaming data that's uh, landing in there every few seconds. So what we have is a SQL based Delta Life tables. And for streaming live tables, which means this is a append only streaming table, and we are doing select star from cloud files. So DLT knows that we want to use auto loader and ingesting from that path. And then we are also creating the streaming live tables by putting some data quality checks, as well as select the columns we need. And here we can start a pipeline. Essentially, we want to use advanced because we are doing data quality in this pipeline. We want to use continuous rather than triggered because this is going to be a streaming pipeline give it the source code where we're ingesting both the fact table as well as the reference tables. Uh, we want DLT to write into Unity Catalog. So we'll give it a Unity Catalog target catalog as well as the target schema. And then we can change the compute or leave the compute as it is. And then we can just create the pipeline. Once we create the pipeline, DLT will start to run. And you can see that the streaming tables and materialized views are being generated from the uh, streaming source as well as the reference tables. What we can do now is going over to the SQL editor and see that these tables are showing up in the Explorer and we can write SQL queries to verify that these tables have been generated and data has been written into these. You can see that our fact table is uh, there. And now what we can do is to do a count and see how many rows we have. So we got 14,166 if we run it again, because we're streaming into that table, we should see a higher count. There we go. So we have 20 more rows that's written into that table a few seconds later. So now we go over to our SQL warehouse. We'll click on the endpoint, click on connection strings, and go to Power BI Partner Connect and download the PBI DS. PBI DS doesn't do much apart from populating the connection string for you. You will still need to authenticate. In here, we authenticated and we are looking for the tables that we generated from our Delta Life tables. So the fact and dim tables. Here, we want to use dual query mode so Power BI can read from the latest data. From here, you can just generate some relationships. If you would have had a foreign key and primary key set up, these relationships will get carried through to Power BI. We didn't, so we need to set up the relationships manually. Now that we have the relationships, what we can do is to build the visualization. To save time, we already have a visualization built. So here is a build visualization on top of that exact 
tables, relationships, and direct query data set. What we need to do is to go to page refresh settings and make sure that auto page refresh is turned on and you want to turn it on at the frequency that is suitable for your use case. In our case, the backend is generating data every three seconds, so we are setting it to three seconds. We want to publish it to Power BI service. So once it's successful, you can open it in Power BI service and look at the data being refreshed every few seconds. Before that, you want to go to admin portal and the capacity setting for your premium capacity, just to check the minimum refresh interval is set up according to your needs. If your minimum refresh interval is 15 or 30 seconds, then it will refresh 15 or 30 seconds instead of the three seconds you set. Now in Power BI service, you can see the data is getting refreshed every three seconds. What we can then also do is to go to SQL Warehouse in Databricks and look at the query history. And you'll be able to see these SQL queries that are sent down by Power BI. One thing to call out with this pattern is you don't have to have all of the Power BI tables in your query mode. You can have the DIM tables in dual mode and the streaming fact tables in the direct query mode. In that sense, you are building a composite model over this star schema, and that's a complete valid variation of this usage pattern. In the next video, we're going to go through how to do this with structure streaming. Thank you for watching Data Leaps. If you think the content is useful, please like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it.